know there's a lot of negative press around the technology industry these days. The tech lash, that's yeah, somewhat understandable. People are struggling and yet the tech industry is booming, creating incredible wealth for a relatively select group of people, I get it. But the reality is that the technology industry has guided us through the pandemic, allowing us to work remotely, securing our employees, keeping goods and services flowing and using data and analytics to track COVID and accelerate the development of vaccines. And many in the tech industry are passionate about giving back and applying their talents to solve real world problems. I'll give you an example. After accidents, cancer is the number one cause of death among young people. In the middle of the 20th century, the survival rate for kids with cancer was 0.0%. Today, it's above 85%. Cancer in kids is much different than in adults. The types of cancer, the diagnoses, the treatments, they vary. Different types of research are required to attack the problem, and that takes money. And one of the people here in Boston and beyond that's using his talents, his creativity, his network, and yeah, his wealth to attack this problem is my friend Chris Lynch, entrepreneur, investor, and philanthropist. Chris, awesome to see you. Welcome back to theCUBE, my friend. Thanks, Dave. It's great to be here. So, uh, listen, this personal story of yours, how did you get into, wh where's the passion come from for kids with cancer? Dave, it's actually related to one of my startup endeavors. When you're starting bootstrapping a company, you're typically staying at people's homes <laughs> and, you know, to save money. Sleeping on couches, yeah. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And, um, you know, through the years of these startups, I've developed relationships with families all over the world, you know, because I've literally lived with them, you know, for periods of time until the companies got to points where we didn't have to do that. And um, there was a family in Seattle um, that I used to stay with, and um, they had a son that was a similar age to one of mine, and um, he ultimately passed of cancer. And... Um, I stayed with the family and I stayed with them a few times while they were going through this and I was touched, I was um, inspired by their courage, how positive they were. I was thinking in my own circumstance, how could I, I would just hate the world. And you know, in, the, you know, in these families I stay there, you know, they call me Uncle Chris. And um, I was having dinner at the, you know, at the family home and I was looking at the boy and uh, I excused myself, went to the, to the bathroom and I started sobbing. And um, he knocks on the door, comes, comes in and says, Uncle Chris, it's okay. My dad tells me, you can do anything. Just do whatever you can so that other kids don't have what I have, you know? And it, wow, wow, and I can see the emotion that you're feeling right now, bringing, bringing us back to that moment. Well, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. All right, so you got Tech Tackles Cancer. This is your kind of latest venture. I think the last one was uh, 2018. It's coming back, took a break because of COVID, and this is going to go down on the, the 21st at the Sinclair in Harvard Square bring a bunch of people in. We got a number of people who have signed up to actually, you're one of them, of course, but to, to sing karaoke, raise a bunch of dough, and then there's like a little contest, right? So, Alex, bring up that slide. I got I to gotta show the audience who we got here. Uh, this is Chris, this is your competition. Uh, so here, here you go. You got, we got Steve DuPlessis, right? <laughs> That's a great picture, Steve. Thanks for doing this, right? Nathan Hall, who's at Pure Storage. Steiny, Ken Steinhardt from Infinidat, and you got George Hope at HPE, and Joe LeMay, who's uh, he's an inventor, he's the CEO of Rocketbook. Any of these guys worry you? I'm going to sleep easy tonight. <laughs> so, how did you get into rock and roll? You wrote a blog one time, you, you quoted Nietzsche as saying that life without music would be a mistake, you know? <laughs> rock and roll, rock on. How'd you get into rock and what's your I, passion I, there? Well, I always loved rock and roll, but I had a cousin that was staying with us. He was a student at BU, and he, he went to his semester abroad. He went to the UK, and he came back with all this punk rock music, the Sex Pistols and all, all this stuff. And um, I heard it, and it, it just triggered something in me. And then I didn't want to do anything but play music and you know try to be a musician. And um, 
you know, my grades and everything else suffered as a result. But uh, music's always inspired me. The creativity, the boldness, um, a lot of things that I think I apply to my startup life. How can people help? Let's say they want to get involved. I mean, obviously they can attend the event, they donate. What, what, what should people do? They can sing? <laughs> yeah, so they can, they can certainly sponsor the event. There are, there are a number of sponsorship opportunities. Um, they can participate. They can volunteer for the event. It is an all-volunteer organization. Every dollar that we raise goes to the charities that we've listed. Um, and we handle everything else through a lot of arm twisting and, you know, and whatnot. Great. So it's June 24th, uh, sorry, June 21st at the Sinclair, which is right in Harvard Square. Um, so it's live band karaoke, Correct. right? I've seen some of the, we're going to share a little, a, little, a little clip there. And so it's a call to action to all you, you rock and roll technology gods out there. You know, we showed you the, the five folks plus Chris who were doing it. Um, and so we're, we're dying to, to see you up there again. You must be really excited about it. I am. I am. <laughs> I'm going to be much better than last time. Okay, well, so just on that note, we'll, we'll close with a little taste of what's in store for June 21st. We'll see you there. Now my loneliness is killing me now. Don't you know I still believe? Midnight, midnight six. Midnight, midnight six. Midnight, midnight six. Things that you don't understand.